Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Uh, the project I want to set out and make today is a realistic, in fact a very realistic, star field. So I'm going to start off by creating a cube um, sphere and I'll set it back there. Hide my ground plane. I think I'll rotate my camera up towards the sky a little bit so I can see the stars that uh, we're going to create. And let's give this a texture. In view 7 now I have this red-brown rock which I'm very partial to. And come over here to my atmosphere and uh, under the Others tab I'm going to choose Outer Space. I'm going to select OK. And let's render this to screen 600 by 800 and let's see what it gives us. Well, the planet material looks cool. I like that, but the star field, it's not very realistic. It's just a bunch of white dots. And uh, there's not much variation. So let's come over here to the Effects tab in our Atmosphere Editor. And I'm going to lower the number of stars. I'm going to lower their brightness. I don't want them, I don't want colored stars. Select OK. Let's try rendering that again. Well, by adjusting the brightness, all it did was make the stars smaller but it, it appears that the luminous value of all the stars are about the same. There's very little depth to this. Oh, there are a few small little stars that, that, you, that you can see. A little one here, here, a couple over here. There's a few sm small ones. But, you know, all these big ones appear to have the same level of illumination. It's not very realistic. And uh, Vue just doesn't have, at least at least not right now, uh, a great ability to create realistic stars uh, and create a realistic star field. So I'm going to have to do this in Photoshop. Here in Photoshop, I created this spinning galaxy image. And actually, this is going to work really well because it gives me all this black area here to play with and create a uh, star field on. Now, if you're not into sci-fi images, that is fine. Don't tune out because this uh, technique works absolutely perfect for regular nighttime skies here on here on Earth. You know, you can um, make a great nighttime sky uh, above a tree line with some with some uh, buildings uh, in a city uh, with even with or without clouds whatever you want this doesn't have to be applied only to you know sci-fi images so don't tune out I think you'll find a lot of use for this uh, so I want to create a realistic star star field uh, first thing I want to do is create a new layer I'm gonna come up here to edit and I want to fill this with 50% gray. Now, if you're not using Photoshop um, and you don't have, you know, fill with 50% gray, uh, here's the number value. I'll select that gray. Here's the number value for 50% gray. In the RGB uh, settings, it's 128. You can get away with 127, 128, just as long as you put your slide, you put your color picker here right in between um, complete white and complete black. So I've got it filled with 50% gray. I'm going to come up here to filter and come down here to noise. I'm going to add some noise to this. I want Gaussian distribution, monochromatic color, and for this I want the amount set all the way to 400. Click OK. Come back up to filter. I'm going to come here to blur, and uh, I want to choose Gaussian blur. Before I do that, let me show you the size of my image. I always render in, um, if I'm doing a 3 by 4 uh, four render, I always, or three by four image size, I always render at 2500 and 600 dpi. The reason why I like that is because that higher degree of resolution and that larger image size gives me a lot greater con uh, control and ability when I do post work. So I'm going to come down here to come up to filter, come down to blur and Gaussian blur, and I know for my image size with the resolution it is, I want a small radius of 1.5. I'm going to select OK. Now what I want to do is come up here to Edit, uh, excuse me, Image, Adjustments, and Levels. 
Now watch my star field as I start bringing up my shadow slider and uh, cutting out my star field. A, the, the, the star field starts, uh, starts dropping away and, and I can be very um, um, precise in choosing exactly the, the look that I'm, that I'm after. Now this is really more stars than I want. I want this sort of look, much fewer stars, but I'm going to go with creating more stars. I can always undo later. Now if I use the brightness slider, watch, I can increase their brightness. But I'm going to leave it right where it is. I'm going to include more stars in my uh, star field here than I really want because we're going to uh, remove some of them. Now th look at the small size of these stars. Um, the detail that you can get by working in a higher resolution in a larger size image is much greater than say if I this were a, re a rendered image of 1024 by 768. Um, all right, I'm going to select my star field. I'm going to come down here and add a layer mask to that. Now with my layer mask selected, I want to make sure I'm working with my default black and white colors. I'm going to come up here to filter and come down here to render. And I'm going to apply a cloud render, um, um, a, a cloud render to that. And look at the difference. Let me click off and click on. And you see that I have uh, wherever the black was in my render because I'm working on a layer mask it thins out a lot of those stars. I'm going to set my blending mode to lighten and let me zoom in here a little bit more and let me shut off my this was before and this is with the layer mask. There, there seems to be a much more random distribution of stars by creating that layer mask and running a, a clouds filter on it. Now I don't want any stars here in front of my planet or I might but in this instance I don't. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool and I'm just going to erase the ones where I don't want it. Now if this were a nighttime sky with say clouds on it, I would want to use my eraser and delete and erase the ones that uh, were over my clouds, but you definitely want uh, a, so a soft brush so that you don't have those um, just, just so that there's a, blend, uh, a smoother blend between uh, where the stars are and where they are not. So this is a much, much better uh, approach to creating a realistic star field than what uh, I think we're able to do in view. And let's say this is the, the look that I want, but I want to increase the brightness. Well, I can still, on my uh, rendered clouds layer, come back up to adjustments and I can look at the difference. I can bring back some of my stars and increase their their brightness. I still have control. Or if I don't want that many, I can reduce the visibility of lots of them and then bump back up the, the brightness of some of them. So I've got a lot more control and a higher degree of flexibility by creating my star field here in, in Photoshop than by settling for kind of the default star field that uh, that you can create in view. So that's creating a realistic star field and uh, nighttime sky right here in view. So I hope you can uh, uh, can use this for all your wonderful view uh, view renders. So thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.